Hey there, my name is Meng, I'm from Design Plus Code, and today we're going to learn all about Protopie. So what is Protopie? This is a tool that can create super detailed prototypes without a single line of code. You can create micro interactions that are very advanced with very little effort. It's cross platforms, which means that it works on both Mac and Windows, but also for iOS and Android as you preview your prototype. You can also import instantly your designs from XT, Figma and Sketch, which means that you don't have to create anything from scratch and you can just animate really quickly. First of all, this is the design that we're going to learn how to animate and prototype. We're going to start the course by creating a very quick prototype and importing our designs from Sketch and then setting the scenes and setting the configuration such as the pixel density and how to set up our layers properly in Sketch or in Figma. And by the way, you don't need Sketch because you can just import your Sketch file to your favorite design tool. And also the template is provided for the course. Then we're gonna learn how to prototype animations like these with a start trigger and then using multiple animation properties such as opacity, move, scale, rotate, 3D rotate, as well as resetting your layers. Then we're gonna move on to gestures, which means that you can drag different elements in your UI and then something is going to happen. We're gonna have multiple animations happening as you drag and then you can release and then make it back to its original state. We'll also learn about conditions, which means that you can toggle back and forth between animation states like this. Nowadays, we see a lot of custom transitions, which means that you have one screen that gracefully transition to another screen without breaking the flow. And in this case, we can also use gesture to do some scaling effect and use a pull to be able to detect at which progress that you're dragging. And as a result, you can do something else and go back to the original screen. Next, we'll learn how to use a scroll page transition so you can scroll between multiple screens and then change the background color as you scroll. Also show the page indicator right here using the condition again. Also, you can store variables such as the scroll position right here. And you can see as I scroll, this number is updated in real time, which is really cool. If you wanna create a login experience, you can do so by having the input field and then here you can center your content as you focus on your input, but also you can check for error message like this one. And once you're done, you can type your email, for example, and then click here. And it's going to play an animation, which is a MP4 file. That animation that you just saw can be found on lottiefiles.com. And here you can search for success, for example. For any of these animations, you can click on it and then export to a GIF or an MP4 file so that you can use it right here. The reason why this is really effective is because when you build a real app, you can actually use Lottie animations and it's going to appear exactly the same way that it shows in your prototype. Then we'll learn how to use chain so that with the drag interaction, I can set to a range of values which can then be applied to 3D rotate and move. So that gives this really cool effect right here. In Protopy, you can also set a formula so that when you go to the screen, for example, it takes the height of this blue rectangle. And then as you drag to resize that rectangle, then it gets applied to the number in the text right here. Oftentimes you wanna to jump to another scene. So for example, here I have two scenes. And so what I wanna do is do part of the animation on this uh, screen right here. And then once I reach a certain animation completion, I can use range to jump to another screen. So like this, when I click here, you can see that it jumps to the other screen, this one. And then from here, it starts the animation on that screen. So by doing this technique, then you can manage many, many screens in your prototype, and it's a lot easier to organize. 
Another thing that we can do is to store variables and then use the mouse over interaction to assign that to each of those variables. And then as you detect changes, then you can apply that to different animations, such as move and 3D rotate. And as a result, you can get this really cool 3D effect right here. So you can see that it applies some parallax effects. And then finally, we're gonna learn how to use sensors. So you can use the tilt, the sound, the compass, 3D touch, and so on, and then apply different animations based on what the sensor is going to give us. For the sensors, you have to test it on your device, which is really easy. You just need to scan the QR code from the iOS or Android app, and then you can also connect it via USB and then test your prototype directly on your device. So this is a brief overview of all the things that we're gonna learn in this course. Of course, there's a lot of techniques in between pertaining to animations, prototyping, and UI design in general. In the new Protopie 4, you're gonna see a number of new features such as components, so that you can make things reusable, such as a navigation or a status bar, so you don't have to recreate it from scratch every single time. Also, you're gonna notice that we have constraints now, which means that your prototype can be adaptive, but also animations can be based on constraints, which make things a lot easier. For example, you can see that this animation is simply using constraints so that every layer that is inside this rectangle is going to follow the constraints so that when I click on it, it's always going to be on the top right of the whole container. And that's really useful. When you work in Protopie, you can always upload your prototype in the cloud. And once it's uploaded, you're gonna be able to share it via a URL like this one. And then you can just click it from here. And like this, you can share this URL and people are gonna be able to play with your prototype from the link or also from their device as they open this via their mobile app. One thing that makes learning Protopie really easy is that on their website, you can have access to a bunch of prototypes that you can download the source and see how it was made. You can check a lot of examples from their website using different techniques and also, they have really good documentation in their learn page. Here, if you click on basics, for example, you're gonna see that it's gonna explain every single aspect of the app with visuals and it's even accessible as you prototype, which means that when, for example, you click here and you mouse over, you see the question mark and then you click on it, it goes to the website and it explains to you how it works. So I hope you're excited to learn all about prototyping and animations. All the design assets are provided. So the starting template and the completed template is there so they can compare against your own progress. So let's start this by opening the design file from Sketch. And it's important to get this open so that you can easily import that to Protopie. So once you have Protopie, you can go to settings, and here it's important to go to Canvas in Preferences and set the device that you want to design for. In this case, I'm going to use the iPhone 10 at 3x and press OK and click on New Pie. And here I can start importing my design. Once I have this, I can just import from Sketch. And then here I click on one of the artboards. Again, this has to be from Sketch, so it has to be open. And I'm gonna start with the home. So I'm gonna go back to Protopy, click on home, set to 3x, this is really important, and then import. Once that's done, it's gonna give you all of the layers, and then you're gonna be ready to animate your prototype. So I'm gonna go to scenes, and I'm gonna add new ones. And I'm going to fast forward this part and add a bunch of scenes. And voila, now we can go ahead and name each of these scenes. So for example, home. And there you go. So I'm gonna go back to home and here I can start doing my prototype. Once you have your template set up, you can save it 
and it's going to be saved as .py, which means that you can share this file and anyone can open it and preview your prototype. Before we conclude, I just wanna point out that it's very, very important to organize your layers properly in the design tool. And additionally, when you use masking, such as this card, for example, it is very important to group that and then group again so that everything is also grouped. As a result, when you're gonna go to Protopie, you're gonna see a double group. So this is the mask and then this is the group. So that's one important lesson that I learned as I was prototyping. In general, you wanna organize your layers the way that you want to animate them. So for example, I separated the card one, card two, and card three, so that when I start my animation, I can drag this one, and then I can apply different animation to the other cards. The same for the transactions, so I want to animate these separately, therefore I set them as groups. So that's it for now. In the next session, we're going to learn how to do a quick prototype of the entire scene of our app and use some basic triggers as well as responses. We have a lot of techniques to pick up and I think it's going to be really fun. This course is entirely free thanks to the folks at Protopie. They sponsored my time in creating this course. So if you enjoyed, please share it to your friends and colleagues. It's entirely free. With that said, I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.